Welcome to This Organized Life. If you're a mom, wife, or coffee lover seeking advice on how to reduce clutter and reclaim time, look no further than your host, Lori Palau, founder of Simply Be Organized and author of Hot Mess, A Practical Guide to Getting Organized. For a lot of people, clutter is their dirty little secret, but it doesn't have to be. Each week, we will share practical tips, chat with experts, and provide strategies on how to keep you organized. I hope that by sharing our stories, you feel a little less alone and more empowered to tackle the areas that are holding you back. So let's get started. Hi, everybody, and welcome to today's episode of This Organized Life Podcast. I'm your host, Lori Palau, and I'm so glad that you are joining me today. I'm very excited for today's guest because we are talking about one of our most popular topics or most popular requested topics, which is meal planning, meal prep, all of the things. And as somebody who is a little bit of a foodie myself and someone who loves to cook, I love talking to people who have cookbooks because I love to pick their brains, learn all about it. Um, And our guest today is going to be awesome. I can't wait to chat with her. Um, So before I bring her, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about her. So our guest today is Caroline Fossil. And Caroline, she has a new cookbook out, which we're going to talk about, but she also runs a website called All of You Whole, which I love. I think it's so cute cute. And she's also a mom and she does a lot of healthy cooking. And I know she was a vegan and now I believe she does paleo cooking. I'm curious to talk about that as somebody who's like gone through all the different levels myself. But what I love about um, her approach is it's not just about meal planning and prep, but she talks about how are we um, about saving food, freezing it. Um, How can we streamline grocery shopping? All of the things that kind of weigh us down, like so many people really like to cook, like myself, but sometimes the prep part of it is a little like, eh. So she is going to talk about how we can simplify that, which hello, who doesn't love that, and continue to feed our family healthy, delicious, wholesome meals. Um, and again, want to talk about her new book. So without further ado, let me welcome my friend, Carolyn Fossil to the show. Welcome, Carolyn. As a Caroline, I think yeah, I keep saying Carolyn, but it's Caroline. So Caroline. I'm sorry, people. No. I'm sorry, people. It's Caroline. <laughs> I'm so worried about pronouncing your last name incorrectly. Last, I'm screwing up happens. your first name. Every time, every time. It's like, okay, remind me how you say fossil. But oh then it's my like, gosh. Caroline well, can really go either way. So it's not just you. <laughs> well, I have a last name Palau, which nobody knows how to right, pronounce. Right. So I am okay. very sensitive to that. Anyway, no, no welcome. I'm welcome. so happy to be here. <laughs> yes. So tell us. So I gave our listeners like a real, real, real top line overview, but just sure. tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah. So my name is Caroline Fossil. I'm a Southerner born in Nashville, Tennessee, currently living in Denver. um, And I love food. So my whole brand to date has been all about food. So I create paleo, clean eating recipes. um, And that mainly came about because I had some digestive issues as a kid. And I've just come to this place where I just want to know what makes us our healthiest selves and how can we feel great um, and nourish our bodies and our kiddos' bodies. Um, And so, yeah, I just create healthy recipes, just came out with a cookbook, Prep Cook Freeze. So we're just making all the food. (laughs) Oh my gosh, that's awesome. Do you have a picture of the cookbook? I don't have a hard copy. Oh, I I should. I I was going to say we could could show it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. (laughs) Well, we'll make sure that we'll be, when when it goes live, we'll be posting pictures of of the cookbook for everybody. Yeah. So, so give us some backstory. So like you said, you had some digestive issues. Most people start, at at least in my world, most of the entrepreneurs or women entrepreneurs who I deal with started their businesses to solve a problem, whether it was a problem that they had or a problem that they saw in their lives or that was affecting people around them. So obviously you're no different. Um, But before you became a cookbook author, you... (laughs) 
were just trying to figure it all out and you started this website. I'm curious if you could right. just talk a little bit about that part of your story. Sure. So uh, I went to the University of Georgia, go Docs. We're champions now. Yes, I was <laughs> going to say, more, I was very more exciting. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Alabama people, but I was very happy. My daughter goes Good. to Clemson. So, yes. but um, so we've got like some, yeah. Yes, but so, I'm very happy. Yes. yes. Go Georgia. So, anyway, <laughs> went to the University of Georgia, met my husband. We got married really young, as some of us weirdo Southerners do. So, I was 22, had a plan to w- wait 10 years to have kids. Like, we're going to be financially stable and have all of the answers right and then we got pregnant six weeks later so it's really ella who started it all because as you mentioned in the intro we had been near vegan for five years and that came about kind of from the same reason like at the time we just how do we be our healthiest self so that's kind of where we landed on first well then when ella was born um i'm this young mom i had no friends with kids i had no siblings with kids i had no idea what i was doing right i'm 23 at that time and then when she started eating solids i just had this crisis of like we've been vegetarian for ourselves is is that going to be the best choice for ella so i just had this just seriously a crisis. Like what do, what do I, what do I feed my child? Right? So that was kind of the time that the paleo diet was really making waves in the nutrition world. And even though I didn't study nutrition in school, I've just always kind of had my finger on the pulse. Uh, what's new, what's the research saying? Um, and so I read the whole 30 book. It starts with food in June of 2014 we or may of 2014 we did a whole 30 in june and then i started my blog in july so that's kind of what started it all um and we just and really it was just like let's just try this and i felt better than i ever had i mean i did i don't even think that i really realized that it was possible for me personally for my stomach not to hurt like i just had inexplicable digestive issues literally my entire life. Uh, So we were feeling better, our skin cleared up, you know, we're like dropping pounds, like it just was no effort. I mean, we were just feeling fantastic. Um, So that's what started it all, really just my desire to do what was best for Ella. I love it. And it's funny because, well, first of all, I can relate because I've tried so many different things and I am a firm believer that we need to listen to our bodies about Absolutely. things. Um, yes. And I've talked about this on the show, like, well, my husband's type one diabetic and he's right. now he's, he's been, we've done pally. We've done beat, like we've yes. done everything. I've done whole 30, a bunch of things. Yeah. And I notice the inflammatory, the foods mm. that are inflammatory for my body. Yes. And um, I think that's really important. And as somebody who obviously this is a show about organization, right. but I think there's so much overlap and so many parallels to yes. how we eat, how our spaces are, how yes. we can become immune. Like a lot of times, like you said, you didn't realize how bad you were feeling or you, yes. you're, the fact that you woke up every day with a sore tummy was just normal to you. And it's no different than people who wake up with anxiety because of clutter and overwhelm. Mm -hmm. And it isn't until you find some sort of light bulb moment that goes, wait a second, I can reclaim control by doing these simple things. And so that's why I love shedding light with things that we can control, like what we choose to put in our bodies. Mm -hmm. So Amen. tell me about the, so tell me about the blog. So you started yeah. the blog and at yes. the time, like, what was your goal? Was it just like, let me just oh, share my girl. story. Cause, or was it like, I mean, I'm going to start a business. No, I mean, okay. So I, I'm a graphic designer by trade. Okay. So the reason, and also the reason that I started the blog was also when Ella was born. So not only was I 22 when I got pregnant and 23 when I had her, but she came at 30 weeks. So oh, she was, you know, at, for those of you who don't know, it's normally 40 weeks, right? Or <laughs> even 42. So I was super early with her. So she was in the NICU in the hospital for over a month. Um, and my neonatologist said, Caroline, I know you want to go back to work full time. There's no way. Like you can't. Like she cannot go to a daycare in flu and RSV season and she's 
four pounds, right? Like just tiny. And so I had to find a way to work from home. So at first it looked like continuing to work where I was working just from home. But then I realized, why don't I do my own thing? Right. And it really was the, you know, each switching to paleo. And I just, I just felt like it was early on enough that there weren't thousands of paleo bloggers out there like there are now. And so I just felt like this is the moment. And, and what I felt like for myself, especially back in the like early days was people need these recipes. Like at that time, you couldn't go to the store and buy a paleo ketchup like you can now. Like there was nothing. There was literally What year was nothing. this? Just to put it in context. Yeah, 2014. 2014. Okay, right. You, I think so, you said that. Yep, yeah. Yeah, so. so all of these brands weren't out there. We have so many amazing brands now to help you with sauces and even full meals and all these things that just didn't exist. And so I really created the blog mainly like let's share recipes. And because I was working at a web design and development firm, I had, I didn't have those normal speed bumps to starting a business. I'm like, I can think I'm a branding graphic designer. I can think of a catchy name. I can make my logo, which has never changed. You know, I can set up a WordPress website. Like I can do those things. Um, which is daunting for oh, the majority of people everyone. that are out there. Yeah, yeah, totally. What's hosting? Yeah, we don't know. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's, so I had the ability to to create this blog kind of out of nothing, just with the skills that I already had, which is really great. But I mean, you scroll all the way back, which I think is the case with a lot of people. I mean, it's ugly. Like my Instagram feed early days, I didn't think this is gonna be my job. I, mm -hmm. I didn't think that at all. I was doing graphic design kind of contract work, um, doing this just for fun. Like if I create a recipe for myself, why would I not share it? Um, and then here we are. <laughs> I love forward. it. Yeah. I love it. And I love this story for two reasons. First of all, because I always want to like lift people up and shine a spotlight. But we also have mm -hmm. a lot of people who listen to our show that might be at a crossroads. They might be thinking right. of starting a business or maybe they're starting sure. and they're like, I don't have all the perfect pieces together. Sure. And I say it all the time. We just entered our sixth year on wow. this show, which yeah. is crazy. It's and amazing. like, I think back, like I don't, to go back to those early episodes, I'm sure it was, it was not pretty, you know? Sure, yeah. <laughs> and so you don't know, but again, that's the whole, it's all that evolution. And I love sure. that you did that. So you were doing the blog, you had a couple Two more kids? Do you have two? You have so three? I have two kids. I have two. I have, have two. two. So okay. So you had enough. And yep. Owen's over here. Uh, oh. But he he's six now. So that's when he was two. But okay. yeah, so Ella is almost nine and Owen is six, which is nuts. <laughs> so what made you decide at that point that you wanted to have a book? I mean, I have a book. I know what my reasons were for writing a book, yes. but you know, talk us through that because you, I'm sure the blog was doing great and sure. you could have sustained in that yeah. realm. Yeah, sure. So, I mean, it's crazy thinking back. Um, I'm so passionate about helping our kiddos really like develop their passions and the things that, you know, God has blessed them with and their gifts. And I'm so passionate about that because like looking back at my early years, I was in the kitchen. I literally would create recipes like chopped style, just like, what do we got in this fridge, in our pantry and like whip things together with my friends. Um, like pre even being able to like write it down. I'd be like, mom, we got a good one. You need to come write down what we did. So I've been doing this for a long, long time. Um, and I love the blog, but I've also always wanted to be an author. And I just remember this passion from early on, just those days thinking like, you know, if I can create recipes as a five-year-old, what would it be like to actually create recipes and make a cookbook? So um, Page Street, my publisher reached out to me when they reached out to me, it was April of 2020, which was obviously a nuts time. And we had actually launched a, an app that was prep cook freeze. So that was the first step we had an app. And so every two weeks, uh, me and my COO, who's also a chef would create five recipes exactly like it is in the cookbook. Now five recipes, you freeze half, you bring in fresh ingredients for the reheat night. So we were doing that in the app. And when, pre when, when Page Street came to me, I thought this is perfect timing because I'm already over this app. <laughs> like anytime that you have to create content 
that regularly and you're just like anchored down to it like no thanks like, like when you said that you're doing five a week my heart literally just started beating for anybody that does insane. content like yeah. that's a lot yeah <laughs> it was insane it was totally insane and so so yeah we were we were releasing a new week every two weeks and even that was just insanity so but i was so in love with what we had created with the method itself. Like the bones were good. I loved it so much. And so when Page Street came to me, I said, this is perfect. We One of the things that I feel like as entrepreneurs we struggle with is when to let go, right? Like I have some strong Enneagram six in me and I'm bad at quitting. And so um, when they came to me, I thought, here's my out. Like I'm just gonna transition everything into this cookbook. And so that's what we did. We just made sure they wanted it to all be paleo which we had snuck in some dairy some legumes some stuff they wanted to all be paleo which is great so every recipe is paleo and the the method is exactly the same i love it okay we're going to take a quick break we're going to come back i want to dive into it because i want to talk all Perfect. about your method because i think that to me is really really exciting so sit tight we'll be right back okay caroline so the one thing I want you to do, I'm sure most people know this, but I was just thinking it as you were talking right before break, just give a quick overview of what paleo is. Cause I know sure. what it is, but there yep. might be some people out there that aren't familiar. So just yep. give a, a real high level, high <laughs> level. Thank you. Okay. So it is meats, fruits, vegetables, healthy fats, and nuts and seeds. So sounds a little bit limited. Uh, the meats can be all the normal things you're eating beef and, uh, you know, turkey and chicken and pork. Uh, also any wild game if you're feeling frisky or uh, seafoods included in that, all your fish, your... Um, so it it is a, the reason that people eat paleo is because it comes from what did our paleolithic ancestors eat? So when we as a population were hunter gatherers, how were we eating, right? And the reason that I think this is so amazing is, you know, I take my kids to the Denver Zoo and you're seeing a koala sitting there exclusively eating eucalyptus leaves, right? That doesn't seem weird to us. We don't think, man, they should really expand their diet beyond eucalyptus mm -hmm. leaves, right? That is what a koala was created to eat. Additionally, their digestive tract uh, is super long to be able to really process these fibrous leaves. And it just works perfectly for that koala, right? So we're animals too. And so I just love the premise. I just always come back to, you know, how did our ancestors do it? What were, what were they doing? What made them thrive? And how can we adopt that today? I love it. Thank you so much. And yes, um, yes again. Um, so then you, so you had this method. So talk to us a little bit about your method, because again, I, and I said this at kind of during the intro, I love to cook, but yeah. I'm a busy and I'm a mom of bigs. Like my kids are 18 and 21 right now. Oh, so man. I have more, yeah. yeah, I'm old. So I have, um, I have more time, but mm. I think back to those early days or even the middle days when I'm juggling carpool stuff, like you yeah. just time. And that, I always say that out those hours between three to six or four to yep. seven, or that, that witching hour when it's sure. that, it's that race to the finish line between homework, you know, kids coming home from school, yep. homework, bath, tubby, reading a book, go at homework, going to bed, all the right. stuff. Um, and so the simpler that you can make that meal time, meal prep yep. process, like bring it on the better. Um, yep. Yeah. I agree. So, so share a little bit about your method. Yes. So prep cook freeze is my method and my cookbook. And in the cookbook itself, there's 12 different weeks of meals. So every single week you are getting five meals and that's where the meal plan comes in. Like we've already picked the five meals for you. We have grocery lists for that week. Additionally, you freeze half 
and then you pull that out thaw it out but we bring back in fresh ingredients so this is not your grandmama's like mushy potato gross like it is not gross freezer meals at all and so you bring back in fresh ingredients when you reheat it um you do have like a little prep afternoon as as a family we all get involved like i've got my kids washing potatoes uh i got my husband dicing you've got a few things happening at the same time so you're really maximizing your time. We worked really hard to have something in the oven, something on the stove, maybe something in the Instant Pot or Crock Pot if you have it. Um, so you're kind of cooking on all four burners here to really maximize that time. But when you come to cook night, I mean, let's take a taco night, for example, like your ground beef, you're just heating that up. And then we're, we also bring in store-bought ingredients, which I love. That was kind of an addition after our recipe tester, testers tested some weeks. Um, so you're buying pico de gallo, you're buying taco shells, you're buying guacamole, maybe you're chopping up some lettuce. And I mean, 10 minutes later, you have dinner on the table. I love it. Um, first of all, I want to know how I can get a job as a recipe tester because that's yeah. all. I, yeah. I'm next like, book. Next in. book, please <laughs> just sign me up. Yeah, sign um, you up. I think that is, you bring up such an interesting thing because I think there's so many ways that we can simplify the process. Like I know for myself and I'm, oh, and I've always been like, I've always been a perimeter shopper, you know, right. like I always yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I, so and so for me, like bringing in fresh vegetables and is right. always been something that's really important, but just like, for example, getting a diced butternut squash is right. like it's helping me. Or if I yes. want to make zucchini noodles, yeah, you know what? Yeah. I could buy them, but just <laughs> right. But I could just yeah. buy them. And sometimes you might pay a little bit more to have it right. done for yeah, you. You will. Right. Um, but it becomes that trade-off of what's more important to you at that time. If you are sure. somebody who either A, doesn't enjoy it, or you know that your time is super crunch and you want to do this, it might be worth it for you. And maybe you're not doing it every day, buying right. the pre-cut, pre dice stuff, you right. know, but to factor that in, I think a lot of times it helps people with that whole either or mentality. Yes. And it allows you to have that both and. So I love that you said, you're not necessarily creating everything from the ground up. Right. You're plugging and playing as you go. Yeah. And the fun thing is at first, to be honest, it was like, this is a cookbook people. Like I want you to make everything from scratch. But then I really listened to what they said. And they're like, if I'm going to make am I, it was my cookbook testers saying, if I'm going to make all these sauces, this is now unsustainable and you're not solving the problem that I have. And so I'm like, okay, moment of Zen. I can call in the grocery list and in the recipe for these pre-made sauces, pre-made different things. And then we have an entire section in the back of the book that's all the homemade sauces. So you wanna make your chicken tikka masala sauce from scratch with my recipe, I highly encourage it. It's in the back of the book. You just wanna that's buy delicious. it pre-made. We yeah. give you the clean, healthy option also. So it's not even just like go to the store and pick whatever out. These are sugar-free uh, you know, sauces and things clean ingredients, clean oils, all the different things. So they're really healthy options that you can use again and again. Yeah. And again, there are some people that are like, if you're not making your bone broth from scratch and it's not really, <laughs> but you could simply right. also just go to the yes. store and buy a box of bone broth and call it a day. Right. You so call it a day. yeah. Yes. Um, all right. I'm get this next question. Yes. It's for our listeners, but I'm going to be super transparent as they all know I am and say, this is personal as well. Okay. Let's Can we it. talk about the freezing? Because I, yes. I am a batch cooker and especially right now, yeah. if you listen to this in real time, it's winter. I live in the Northeast. I'm doing a lot of soups. Like yeah. I do a lot of like hearty soups and yes. I wind up just giving it away to people, which I <gasps> love do to that. do because <laughs> I stink at the freezing part of it. I just don't do it right. I don't okay, have a good me, system. I need your, I need to know your struggle though. Like when you say I don't do it right, what okay. does that mean to you? Well, I don't, well, first of all, I don't, I don't think I plan in advance, right? So there's no okay. prep. So, so let's start like really ground level. I don't think I have the right containers that, or I don't oh. know what I should be storing it in. Okay. So oh, that's, you're going to love th this organized okay. life. You're going to love this part. <laughs> okay. So definitely that. So like the okay. actual, like what are the storage 
containers that I should use right. to do that. And then like, I, I guess I could figure out like portioning out, but I feel like, am I portioning out for single serving? Am I put, like, I think mm. I'm overthinking it. And then I what happens is I get in my own head and then I don't do it. And then I make it like I had a big batch of chicken soup, right. Yeah. That I made mm. a few days ago, like, and it was great. And now it's been sitting there for a few days yeah. and like there's, cause sometimes it goes and for anybody that's out there, I'm sure you can relate. Like sometimes you make something and it's gone in like 48 hours and other right. times you go there and it's sitting in the refrigerator and it's four days later. And I'm like, what the heck? Nobody's uses. But at four days later, I don't want to like, freeze it at this point. It's not, I want to toss it. Yep. Yeah. Totally. So, so just give me, so I can become more proactive in the whole yeah freezing game because I feel like I'm missing the boat. Yeah. Okay. I love this question because I okay. feel like we all, I feel like we could all do this better. Right. And, and really prep cook freeze also came around because I had never found a method that really worked for me, but what I had started doing was just like you, Lori batch cooking. Like I'm going to make a quadruple batch of my sweet potato chicken or my sweet potato chili. Um, and I'm going to freeze a bunch of different containers of it. So I had really gotten into that. And, and soups, like you're saying, is a really, like, it's a really great uh, way to enter the freezing world because most things in a soup freeze pretty well. So I will tell you this. What I do is I will batch cook a bunch. And then I get the glass. I love glass. Plastic can get in your system. It's an endocrine yep. disruptor. So I mostly use glass. And I'll just get the circular Pyrex containers. Okay. So, I mean, they're, you know, they're three, four inches deep. They're, they tell you how many quarts at the bottom. So I have a bunch of big ones. I use my biggest Pyrex containers the most. Um, because for me, what I want when I thaw something, what I want is I want it to be one night and one leftover night. That's, okay. what, that's what my goal is. And that's, that's kind of how we eat anyway. Like I'm going to make this and we're also going to eat it tomorrow night, or I'm going to make it once and we'll freeze the rest. So you can either have it like a single, like I'm going to have enough for the four of us to have a bowl of chili, or you can double it and say, I'm going to have this for two nights. One. So that's kind of how I freeze let, like main portions is just in these glass containers. Now, if we're talking about, I want to batch, batch, make a ton of sauce. I love putting sauces in stasher bags. Do you have any stasher bags? No. What is that? What? Oh my gosh. Okay. I love stasher bags. Okay. So they're silicone Ziploc bags, basically. Okay. So okay. you can either have like a sandwich size, you can have a half Writing gallon okay. size. Yeah. Okay. But here's what's amazing. I okay. didn't know until I got stasher bags that silicone is basically like flimsy glass. It's like, it feels See, like rubber. I know it's, it's glass. A, and it's, and it's safe. I'm, oh, I'm it's people safe. are probably, our listeners are probably like, what are she asking? It is. It's fine to you. Okay. okay. So the funny thing is because glass doesn't, uh, like leach into your food. Okay. It, just like I was telling you, I want you to use the glass Pyrex yeah. container and not plastic. Of course. Um, same with silicone. So silicone is glass. So it's so much healthier oh, for you than God. a Ziploc bag or a plastic type container. So for sauces, because the enemy of anything that you freeze, and I know you know this, is just air, right? right. So with a silicone bag, you, you get all the air out and then you zip it tight. You know, you just seal it like this. You, you know, you seal it tight. Yeah, yeah, so that's yeah, for great sure. for sauces. Okay. Additionally, because it's glass, and this is my like secret pro tip, you can actually marinate things in your stasher bag and open up a tiny bit put it on like either in a casserole dish or a sheet pan just for leaking and bake it because it's glass. Wait, it's, in the bath. No the way. Bath. Is it blowing your mind? I know. That's what I want. Well, because that's my other question is, okay, so I get the freezing and then when I want to use it. Right. What, yes. how do I, how do we do it? How, how do we do it? Okay. Walk so us through. in the cookbook okay. at, at the bottom of every recipe, we have okay. the reheat night instructions. So most of the time it's like, pull it out, 
heat it this way, you know, thaw it this way, heat it this way. And then here's how you bring in the fresh ingredients again. But gotcha. we have, usually we have three instructions for every recipe because it's like, are you the pro planner? Are you actually going to pull this out the night before and put nice. it in your fridge? So that's a right. really easy yep. way. You pull it out the night before, leave it in your fridge, make sure your fridge isn't so cold that things stay frozen in your fridge because that's a problem. Yep. So you want it to thaw a full 24 hours in your fridge. So that's kind of the ideal scenario. Then if morning of, you're like, I want that five pep pepper sweet potato chili, you can pull it out of your freezer and leave it on the countertop. So because yep. it's frozen, because you're eating it that night, it's going to be fine. So you leave it on the countertop. It's a little bit faster of a thaw. Mm -hmm. And then we also have instructions for, is it 3 p.m. and you want to eat this tonight? You know, you can just do kind of a warm water thaw. Right. Well, that's right? what I was wondering. Yes. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. But, and then the glass containers make it easier to just, you know, put it in because they're heavy. So they'll stay kind of in the bottom of your warm water. And then that's a faster way to thaw things. Yeah. I love it. I'm always trying to think of ways that I can simplify because like you, I, again, I love to cook. I always say food is my love language. Right. And, but I don't always have the time. So I do a ton of cooking on Sundays. Sundays right. are like my prep day and yeah. I will cook a bunch of foods. And because like I said, my husband's vegan, but I'm more right. paleo, right. like unofficially, but more, sure. uh, you know, more because I do, eat, I do eat beans. Right. So yeah. I can't say I'm truly paleo. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I cook a lot in parts, you know, like right. I will cook, a, you know, like I'll make, you know, a brothy soup, but then I'll do a side with right. a chicken and then I'll do my vegetables separate. So we can mix that and match sense. our parts. Yes. That's how I cook so that I'm not yeah. cooking 10 different meals for people, no, but yet. You can't do that. <laughs> right. Um, and then it's like, I'll put that in the fridge and you sure. can mix and match. You can make a salad yeah. with the vegetables. You can put it in the soup. You could do whatever you yes. want. I think but that's so great. The piece of the puzzle that I've been missing this entire time. And I want to reach through and just hug you right. is the freezing part. I know because, we don't I use know. it enough, but I think honestly though, Lori, I think we've all been scarred by bad freezer meals. Sure. You know, I mean, it comes out and you're like, Bleh. so a good rule of thumb, if you're kind of trying to do this yourself and you're not using the cookbook is if I can buy this ingredient already frozen in the freezer aisle, mm -hmm. that tells me it freezes. Like oh. that's kind of my rule of thumb. Like you can even find okra in the freezer aisle. It's not going to be great in like if you're making fried okra, but it's going to go great in a gumbo. And oh. you're going to be fine freezing that gumbo and then reheating that gumbo. Another tip too, which is really important if you haven't, like frozen things before when you're getting into it, label, label, label. Well, so you're speaking I, my language there. Yeah, so. yeah, you know you got a label. <laughs> so if you're using the cookbook, what I suggest to people is actually painter's tape. So we've got the Pyrex glass container. It's got a plastic top. Painter's tape, use a Sharpie and say, this is the title of the recipe. And then if you put the page number for that recipe, you're going to go right to what you need, the instructions for how to bring it back to life. But if you're making it, if you're making something yourself, right? Like you mentioned a chicken soup. What I would say is this is the chicken soup, like title it, but then also put the date on there. Um, and and yeah. so, and also even the serving size, like you might not remember mm. how much did I put in there. So you want to know all the information when you're like, I want to pull this out of the freezer is this exactly what I need to be pulling out of the freezer? So you think you're going to remember, I promise you, you do not remember. Like you're like, there's this brown soupy thing with things in it. That could be a million things. So right. you got to label. <laughs> no, I, I agree. I mean, I label and date everything. And, right. um, yeah. And so, and I, the painter shape is a great tip I use, which is, this is just like a free plug for them, but I use the post-it makes the, it's called a label roll. I don't know if you've ever ah. seen it. Oh my gosh. I don't think I have one in my, in my desk. I right love, here. I post-it notes. I feel like awesome. sometimes fall off for well, me. Well, that's why I don't like them. No, but this okay. is like, it's like a painter shape. It's called a late, it's called label roll. I'm going to actually make Ooh, myself a note. I'm going to post yes. it in the show notes, total okay. free advertising for them. Yeah. I use it for everything and it's great because they easily pull off oh. and I do it even in my fridge. So I'll put, 
Because sometimes I'll have like two soups and one will be like right. a vegan vegetable and oh. one will be a chicken vegetable. Right. You can't tell the difference no, if you don't see. No. So I right. will put, I will label. put what it is. And I use label rolls for everything. Oh, I'm so excited. They're the best. And yeah, it's, and it's basically like using a painter's sheet, but they have, right. but wait, they have other colors. It's easier. Right. And it's designed. Yeah. It's awesome. It's it looks like a, <laughs> it looks like a roll of scotch tea. So, yes. and you could okay. buy them online or staples. Yeah. Or, I'm going to, I'm going to get that for sure. Yeah. Um, anyway, but so I think that is awesome. I love it. So before we, you've given so, so much great information before we kind of tie things up with a nice neat bow, any other like parting wisdom that you have for our people that you want to mm. share? Yeah, sure. So much. How to choose. Okay. I, I mean, know. I sorry. Think, no, you're good. Well, I think that, you know, if you want to kind of use the prep cook freeze method and you're saying, I wish I could, I'm already batch cooking. I wish I could, you know, do freezing more and incorporate that into how I cook. The easiest way to do that, if you do eat meat, I would say 95% of the recipes in prep cook freeze, you are batch cooking just the meat portion. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you're freezing half of the meat portion. So the reason this is so great, let's take taco night. It's just such an easy example. Instead of one pound of ground beef with, you know, siete clean taco seasoning, make four pounds. Like you're sitting there. It's the same amount of time. It still takes 10 minutes to ground that beef, but then you let it cool and you put three in containers. So now next time you want taco night, it's already nine tenths of the way done and you're grabbing the easy ingredients. So if you want to freeze more soups, winter right now, it's a great time to be freezing. Most of your soups will freeze well, but if you want to bring it into the other seasons, just double that carnitas meat and use half, freeze half for later. So the meat part is what is the easiest. It's like the gateway freezer yes, part. Yes. So that freezes really well. So that's a good place to start. I love it. That is so awesome. Okay. So before we go to break, tell everybody again where they can find you if they want to follow. Do you still have the blog? Are you still running? Yes, like is the blog yeah, still? So, so give them that and then also the cookbook. Yes. Okay. So it's all of you whole.com. That's like an all of that you eat. O L I V E. That's also on Instagram. All of you whole, you can DM me. I'm an open book. I love to chat and you can find prep cook freeze anywhere that books are sold. And as any of our listeners know, but if you are new to our show, we have links to everything in our show notes. So you can find them there. You can find them on our podcast page on our website at simplybeorganized.com. So if you have any questions, you'll know exactly how and where to find all things about Caroline. So we're going to take one more very quick break, and then we're going to come back and we're going to just wrap up with our wrap up questions that we ask all of our guests. So sit tight. Okay, Caroline, this has been such a fun conversation. So I could talk fun. to you all day about food and all of this, totally geek out about all this stuff, but we are going to let you go on with your day. Um, <laughs> but before we do, we always ask our guests a few questions. So obviously you've been inspiring us the past 45 minutes. What book has in your life been something that's been inspirational to you. It could be, it could be a professional development book. It could be a personal book. It could be something super fun, but something that's like left an impact that you either go back to, or that you recommend to other people that you could share with our listeners. Mm, gosh, I am such a reader. So okay. this question's so hard for me because I have like a million. Okay. So recently I read John Mark Comer's book, The Ruthless Elimination, Elimination of, of Hurry. Hurry. I have okay. it right on my back shelf. Yep. Okay. Right. So the reason that I love it, well, first let me tell you the tiniest story. So my husband reads it and he's like, Caroline, I think you need to read this book. And he starts telling me like John Mark Comer like stops fully at a stop sign and like in in the line at the grocery he doesn't pick up his phone and he does all these things all these things that seemed so unenticing to me I'm like no I'm living my life at a fast pace and I'm feeling really good about it you know and then later he's like you know I really felt like I was trying to lead our family and you just like disregarded what I was trying to do and I'm like okay well next time you can lead with that right <laughs> and then I'll, exactly. do, I'll do it. <laughs> So I ended up, we, we listened to it on Audible, which I loved, read it. The premise is just, we're all going too fast. 
And we need to slow down. And so we've been doing, he actually has like a two year study that we've started and doing with some of our neighbors. And so, yeah, it's really intense, but we've just been doing like a technology free Sunday, like a Sabbath um, and trying to do like, you know, do some of these principles that he talked about, which are ancient principles. It's nothing, it's really nothing new, but uh, I just loved yeah, it was a great book. It was a great book. I read, yeah, yeah, I I read it a couple of years ago, and it is, um, it really does. It makes you stop and think, and it um, does. so I, we will absolutely link to that. Yeah. And then our last final two questions that we ask all of our guests, because we're all about honesty and authenticity here. Yep. In this particular season of your life, where do you feel like you were the most organized, and where do you feel like mm. a little bit of a hot mess? I love this question so much. Okay, where am I most organized? Okay, surprisingly, and this is like actually an accomplishment for me, I really feel like my home has become really organized. Um, And that is not my nature. My nature is just like, if you had seen me my junior year of college, I mean, you couldn't even step on the floor. Like I am not I am not a neat person by nature, but my husband is so, so neat, so organized. He's the cleaner between the two of us. Um, So we moved into our home in Denver two years ago, exactly. Um, And it's been so lovely. Like we've really set up some uh, routines like kiddos, you need to clean your room every night. So they're really doing it. (laughs) They're at an age where they can. So I feel like we really have set up some processes for ourselves that like we're actually cleaning the counters every night and vacuuming every night which sounds like you should have been doing that anyway but we weren't we had two little kiddos so I really feel like we're getting to a point where our house is pretty organized so that's that's a celebration (laughs) that is that's a huge celebration and I love the fact that your kids are keeping up with it because they're I hope that not but chances are there will come a point in three years in their teenage years where you know, they embrace your junior year of college habits. Yeah. So oh, man, yeah, it was rough. It was a rough time. Okay. So that, I would say that's probably where we're most organized. Where am I least organized? I feel like I, I want, I, I'm like an aspirational uh, time blocker, you know, oh, like I, 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 yes. I, I, like I want, I like put things on my calendar. I'm like, these are my boundaries for myself. No, they're not. <laughs> They're not boundaries for yourself if you disregard them. So I feel like I want to be more organized with um, my wellness. I am with my wellness, but less with like moving my body. Like I want to have like aspirationally, I'm like Mondays are yoga and Tuesdays is the Peloton and Wednesdays. And I just don't do that. Mm -hmm. I like work out, you know, when I want and it's not like planned and it's not definitely going to happen. So I feel like I could, I could improve in that area. I, Hey, listen, I hear you. And I'm a, I think I'm a pretty decent time blocker, but I like laugh. I think about all these things. I was on January 1st. I was like, I'm going to do the Bible in a year. And by January 3rd, I was already like, I'll just read a daily devotional and call it a day. So exactly. No, I've been there. (laughs) Yeah. Well, Caroline, thank you so much. Thank you for coming on our show. I'm so excited to get my hands. It just came out in December, December, right? Yeah. So just in time for Christmas. So um, I can't wait to get my hands on it and start checking out some of your recipes and um, follow you on social media because I'm sure you're posting lots of good stuff. So thank you so much. If this is your first time tuning into our show, welcome. We are all over social media at Simply Be Organized, which is our parent company. You can follow us. um, Obviously you watch us on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts and um, let us know if you post any, if you do any of Caroline's recipes, post them, tag her, let us know. We want to see, we want to see all the great things that you guys are doing. And until next week, I am Lori Palau. Peace out.